Hey guys, I wanted to chat with you today about a pretty cool development that I spotted in my paludarium earlier and also take some time to kind of walk through some of the cooler things that are going pretty well in the paludarium um, while also addressing some of the things that I'm not too happy with. Um, I've had this paludarium for over two years now and I built it from the bottom up myself. So I really hope that I can kind of share my experience with this setup uh, with those of you out there that might be looking to put together your own terrarium or paludarium or vivarium uh, so that you can avoid some of the mistakes that I made um, with this setup and also take some advice from some of the good things that happen here. So in just a second, I'll bring you guys in closer and we can check out uh, some of the cool developments here and uh, chat about why I think they're working. Um, so yeah, come on in and check out the paludarium. So you can see from this angle of the paludarium, this is the left half here, and uh, you can just see how insane everything has gotten in here. This stratoscantia has really taken over in this portion. It's gotten huge and falling and crowding over these other plants. Uh, this hemographis has gotten really big and bushy and is kind of shadowing out some other plants beneath it. Um, some of these Tillandsia have gotten really huge and are blushing really well, uh, looking some, like some awesome growth here. There are actually some micro Tillandsia over this way um, that I can show you guys that are doing really well. You can see Tillandsia tricolepis and Tillandsia loliacea down there, um, micro Tillandsia that have just been completely covered with this Ficus pumilla. Um, I'm so happy that they're doing so well because Microtillandsia are some of my favorite groups of plants and um, it took a lot to get these to take off well, but I will be pruning a bunch of this back soon and allowing these some space to breathe and some more light. Uh, we also have, also have Tectorum over here, Tillandsia Tectorum, uh, Tillandsia Neglecta down here, Tillandsia Iamantha, really pretty form of this guy. Um, another Neglecta over here, and a Tillandsia crocata produces one of the most fragrant blooms of any of the smaller Tillandsia, so that's why I have that guy in there, really hoping he blooms. Um, but going back to this portion over here, I wanted to draw your attention to a recent development in this part of the paludarium, and that is this Tillandsia pruinosa up here. You can see that the plant itself is kind of like a medusa, weird bug looking plant. Um, and it actually produces really beautiful flowers when it flushes. I'll have to attach a picture in here. But you can see on top there that the plant actually produced some seed pods for me. And those seed pods opened up today. You can see all of this fuzzy material is seed pods, um, or I should say seeds themselves. If I pluck out one seed here, you guys can see that this is kind of like a dandelion seed, that it kind of floats in the air until it drops down and lands, hopefully on a portion that has enough moisture for this seed to germinate and become a new plant. And you can see just how many seeds are in these pods that have opened. There's one pod here, one pod here, and then this pod right here has not yet opened. So I've waited for over a year for these seed pods to dehiss and open up. And I'm really, really happy that they have because I've just built a smaller new paludarium that I wanna stock up with some Tillandsia seedlings. And this will be a perfect species to include in that paludarium. So, what I'm going to do today is collect some of these seeds for germination. So I've got a little tiny, um, little tiny jar here that I'm going to use to keep my seeds in. And basically, I'm just going to harvest these as carefully as I can because they can float away very easily. You can see how light and feathery they are. And I'll try to get as many of these in this jar as I can so that I can keep them and germinate them when I'd like to. The second these guys hit moisture, they are going to start germinating. And I don't want plants germinating 
away from a space that I can care for them. So I don't want these to fall down in the soil and germinate so just so that they get crowded out by other plants. I want to place them exactly where I want them. So this will be a long process. I'll probably speed up this video for you guys because it can be a pain in the butt to collect these seeds. Okay, so I've harvested all of the available seeds from these two seed pods here, and that is only two thirds of the full amount. There actually is one more seed pod that needs to dehiss, and that should happen in the next couple days. Um, I've got all of these seeds packed in. There's just hundreds and hundreds of them in here. Um, and I can store them in here as long as they stay dry for quite a while but I will be using them to germinate in my other paludarium as I was talking about. Um, basically, this plant here has done pretty well um, the whole time I've had it because I do mist with uh, distilled water and distilled water with orchid fertilizer in it. Um, a lot of these plants are very healthy <clears throat> and will continue to be healthy uh, in this setup, but some of them and I'll take my phone out here to show you guys a little bit closer up now. Some of them are not doing so well. So for example, that Hartley fern there, not doing very well. Uh, some of the begonias in the back there are getting pretty crowded out and not doing well. A big part of what I believe is the problem with this paludarium is that I actually used a soil mix or a substrate mix that retains quite a bit of water. And in my paludarium, which is um, the water separated from the plants rather than a continual gradual slope where they are connected, um, should stay pretty dry. But if you check out the side of the paludarium here, I actually built a false bottom so you can see that the terrarium portion is about four inches of soil here. And then there's just landscape fabric and these roots can grow through the landscape fabric into the water here. And there are quite a few tons and tons of roots back here that have grown down into the water. And so basically what we have is an aquaponic setup. And so because those roots are back there, they pull and wick moisture up from the water into the substrate. And because the substrate is pretty, pretty uh, water retentive, um, some of those plants that need to dry out a little bit more don't do so well. Uh, for example, those angel wing begonias back there that don't like to sit with their feet so wet, um, that Hartley fern, same thing. Um, even this, uh, rabbit's foot fern has some burn on it almost um, and I'm convinced that's because of the lack of oxygen in the substrate uh, because of how wet it stays um, so I'm definitely it seems like a huge undertaking but in the next couple weeks I'm gonna be taking all of this out and trimming back a lot of these specimens and putting a new mixture in with bark and sphagnum moss to be a lot more chunky and then putting the, the uh, sometimes just the rootstock of the plants back in, depending on what they are, sometimes the full plant, um, back in and hoping for a better outcome. A lot of these plants I won't be removing at all. These Tillandsia that are affixed up here, the little micro orchids there, um, the Tillandsia that are fixed up there on that back wall. A lot of this Ficus plumilla is actually rooted onto that back, so I won't be removing that. Um, I really like the look it gives, um, but for example, I will, this guy is so hidden back here, but he's so pretty. This Papia Petalum Orchid, this Lady Slipper Orchid, that beautiful mottled green leaf, looks like a maze or a labyrinth in there. Um, that I will have to pull out completely and replant just so that I can get all that substrate out. Uh, same thing with all the little volunteers beneath him. There's some peperomias filling in, a cryptanthus, salaginella, um, and begonia amphioxus, and Odyssea orchid, 
all kinds of little treasures hidden in here from stuff that I've added over the years. There are actually some little Hoyas hidden down under here. This is a species of Hoya right here. Um, Black Pagoda lipstick plant right here. All kinds of little things that I will, I'm sure, uncover as I do the work to um, restart this guy. But we've got a really healthy setup. I'm really happy with it because of the humidity that it maintains, because of the separation of the water and the soil. I can have a lot more terrestrial plants here that don't like such wet feet. And I also have quite a lively aquarium portion. You can see a little golden mystery snail here and some nerite snails as well. There's also my beta in here, Indigo Montoya. <laughs> Um, who I can't seem to find at the moment, probably hiding back in his little cave back there. Um, but super, super healthy, and I'm really pleased with where I've come so far with this. Um, but I'll keep you guys posted as I make updates and changes, and as those air plants germinate. But until then, I will show you that some air plants that I've gotten to germinate from seed are already in here. If you look closely, there is one here, there's one right there, there is one right there, and right here. These are Tillandsia utriculara, utriculata, my mistake, um, that I actually got from a friend in Florida that sent me some seeds where these grow native in the wild. And so, I was able to stick some in here and get them to germinate, and some of them, like that one right there, have done very well. But unfortunately, these, as they grow to maturity, can get very, very, very big. So I'll have to keep an eye on them. Fortunately, it looks like they don't get enough naturally occurring rain, uh, meaning that I don't mist them frequently enough to where they stay pretty small. Um, so I do like the look of them, but that will be a project moving forward. So thanks again for coming to check out my paludarium and the collection of those Tillandsia pruinosa seeds. Um, I will keep you guys updated as I make some changes. It's gonna be a huge overhaul to take all this stuff out and swap out the substrate, but I think it'll be worth it. And it's a fun winter project. I'll have plenty of cuttings to start some new terrariums with. So if you guys have any questions, uh, drop them in the comment section here and I'll see what I can do to help you guys out. Thanks so much and happy planting.